Oh, Robin, I'm so excited to have you here today. I am long-term fangirl of Robin Henderson, who has very kindly given us her time today to go through and have a really, I think, in-depth and thorough conversation around networking and what networking looks like for trailing spouses. So I will get Robin to introduce herself in a moment, but I wanted to at least make the connection with the people that are, are listening today with that I had come across Robin maybe, I think it was about seven or eight years ago, Robin ran a workshop in my country town in Australia and it's still to date, I'm not even saying this just because it's you that I'm, I'm having the conversation. You have told me this before. You, I know. <laughs> it was still and still, still to date, one of the absolute best workshops that I've ever been to as far as a professional development opportunity and the impact that Robin's, I think it was a, a one day workshop that yes, I went yes, to, yes. has had on my personal life and my ability to make friends in new places and even more so on my in my professional life with how I network and how I think about networking and how I think well I think you were probably the first person that sort of um, floated that concept of, of networking if it's done properly and like in a, an effective way you should leave a networking event feeling like you don't need a shower because quite often you oh, are. You absolutely, know. absolutely. Mind you, Joe. I do think, thank you for those kind words and for our listeners. Um, and those who have, who have met you and seen you in action know that you, you were a master networker to start with. I just think you didn't quite see that it doesn't have to be, you know, the shark walking through the room, you know, with the, the, you know, the Jaws theme playing you know and waiting for people to pounce that you could just act like the host not the guest basically you know and and in doing that you it doesn't matter what country you're in what what culture you're trying to get to know if you act like the host and you're friendly and you help people people respond you know it's mm. it's it's just how it is and and for every business card that you may give out uh a really, really quick story that was perfect networking. I flew in from Darwin on Saturday night. I, I was buying a newspaper in the checkout in Brisbane Airport. And there was a lady who came in and said, uh, about my age, tall, uh, quite well dressed. And she said, oh, could could you tell me where the, the, the trade to the Gold Coast goes? And the lady behind the desk said, oh, they're not working today. And I, thought, I looked at her and I thought, oh, my God. Anyway, long story short. I said, look, I'm going up that way to get my car. Walk with me. So we had a bit of a chat. Long story short, the trains weren't working. There was there was maintenance. She was going to have to get a taxi, $40 taxi in to pick up a bus. It was going to take three hours to take it to the Gold Coast. And I said, oh, just come with me. And I, I, I didn't drop you at Burley. You know? And she are you sure? So she rang the person who was supposed to pick her up, her niece or something. And then, and she, yes, no, I think she's okay. I think she's okay. So I put all the stuff in the car and I, you know, and then I couldn't find the way to get out of the car park as sometimes happens. And uh, anyway, we chatted all the way down and then I did drop her very close to where the niece was picking up like a Burling Head Surf Club. And uh, as she got out, she she said, oh, Robin, I, I want to put you in my, my uh, phone. And I said, oh, look, and I was trying to one hand to take business cards out of the side of my phone. I said, oh, well, just, just to just take a card out of that. Well, when I looked at my cards the next day, there was like four cards gone because I only it only fits four. And she takes taken all four cards. So I thought, well, she did tell me she had 80 cousins and she was coming here for a auntie, something or other. Um, who knows who I might get a call from. So I thought it was really quite funny. And she texted me the next day and she's actually an artist and got an art gallery and all sorts of stuff. But you know, it was just to me, particularly traveling, and I appreciate that that um in, in Singapore specifically, you've got a lot of people who are just visiting short short and long term and just knowing where to go, whether it's Wagga Wagga or Singapore or, you know, Toronto, it's like, what do you recommend? And you're really wanting that trilogy of trust, the trust that one person has in another, 
or where will I stay? Well, I stayed at this one, don't stay there. Or I stayed at that one, you know? So it's that, uh, so I'm still waiting. That was only Saturday night and it's only Wednesday. So I haven't, I did get a lovely text from her saying, thank you so much for dropping me. And, but I, I who knows where those business cards end up, but she, yeah, she took four. So I thought that was really interesting. Strategic networking, Robin. Strategic networking, accidental. She's in the middle of WA somewhere. So, yeah. <laughs> But that's, that's that sort of networking as what you do as well, Joe, is you see networking as a life skill. It's not something you just do when you go to a Chamber of Commerce or the High Commissioners event. You know, you're you're networking all the time. You know, it's just having having a chat to someone and yeah, just being friendly. Well, I feel like you're showing off because you've launched straight into this and you haven't you haven't let me even get you introduced yet. So, Robin, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and what gives you this street cred that I can bring you to do this call? All right. Well, I've been networking for a really long time. I wrote my first book on networking in 92. And some of our, our uh, listeners, I'm sure, weren't alive then. So that's okay. Um and I wrote the book because I'd launched a career as a speaker. I was running women's networks. And my mentor at the time said, write a book about something that you're really passionate about because you're going to be speaking about it for a long time. And I said, well, I've got this networking group and people come and they all sit together and write. Okay, well, write about, tell them what to do. And I did. So 30 books later, and I did sort of 10 myself. And then um, there's what's called compilation where, uh, and uh, you've, you've been in some of those where, you know, you and three others or 10 others or whatever come together and you split the cost of production. So it's a really inexpensive way to get additional books. And um, so that ended up being, you know, considerable. And now I ghostwrite because I don't need my name on any more books. So <laughs> I, got enough, I, it's, it's I was going to, I was going to interrupt and say, oh, side note, on the side, Robin is a ghostwriter. <laughs> Well, it's once, and I know we're talking about networking, but it's the same, it's the same thing. Once you're able to see, to me, I'm a systems person and networking is a system. You know, you have, and, and these days, not everyone has cards. I choose still to have them. You've got a system, you meet someone, you follow up and, and there's various ways you can follow up. Well, with books, you just say, give me 10 topics you want, 10 headings you're going to put in the book and then we'll work out how you're going to do chapters and this is what you do and you write this much and, you know, it's 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 a system. So um, to me, once I perfected that system, I thought, oh, well, just don't keep it to yourself. You might as well show others how to do it. So, and, and most of the time, people have written a lot of stuff anyway and you just tidy it up for them. So it's fine. Yeah. But back to the networking, a life skill. So well, on, on that as a side note for any of you listening that have got a, a story or a book brewing away in their head, you can you can reach out to Robin and she can help you get it off the off your sure. off your like shoulders or out of your brain into some pages. Yeah, and, and I always say once they've actually sent it to the printers, okay, now be pre be prepared for depression because you go through this ooh, bit like when you meet someone networking, you go, are they going to meet? Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Or I put in this proposal. Oh, oh, did I charge too much? You know, that whole, you know, stuff that we do. I don't know if men do this, but I know women. We, I do. I do. Yeah. The emotional roller coaster that goes with life. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's that's my last sort of 30 years. And prior to that, I was in um sales and and call centers and I had 13 years in hospitality so you know I've got a really sort of checkered career but uh, and now I I um uh I consult to a not-for-profit in uh Darwin and I um they do uh child protection and uh, early learning centers and I'm on the board up there too so you know that's different again but um uses still a lot of networking skills which is great so we've got a pro on our hands. <laughs> I've been described. I, I, I'll accept that for today. Yes, I could be a pro today. 
Fabulous. Well, there's lots of things, as always, that I want to pick your brains about. So our audience here is a crowd of trailing spouses who may be isolated from the workforce because of where they physically live geographically. They might be isolated from the workforce because of the visa situation in the the country that they're currently living in. Uh, They may be entrepreneurs or business owners who have throughout their trailing spouse experience um, started a company or a business or a um, are doing sort of things on their their own accord Um, or there might be people listening that do you know what have really embraced trailing spouse life and are um, are here for a listen and a learn so there's a real variety but but where we've really tried to to position ourselves is for really working with trailing spouses who are feeling that like that isolation from career due to moving around, um, how does that, well, not completely adversely affect your ability to not only just function (laughs) as a human, but also to be able to to, just continue to grow or to maintain a previously established network and and those sorts of things. When you were describing that, I was thinking it's a bit like sort of maternity leave without having a baby you know you're you're actually you've you're out of the workforce and you've got a lot of time on your hands so to me it's a bit well well let's look at a couple of different scenarios it's a bit like moving from one place to another you've got to re-establish a network but you don't want to leave these ones behind and um a really good mate of mine the other day maggie dan i had lunch with and and uh she said, I don't need more friends. I need to spend more time with the friends I've got. And, and that made me really think that it is our responsibility to uh, appreciating everyone's busy. But if you say to someone, and, and so here's the first tip around um, reactivating, if we call it a lapse network. So maybe some of the people you used to work with who when you lived in whatever city you or you met them through the travelling spouse in other countries, that you might have to get up at two o'clock in the morning or something to make the time adjustment, but no, it'll be worth it. And you say, how about a Zoom? Because I think what the best thing that came out of COVID was people's ability to Zoom. And we're all very efficient now. So, you know, not a big deal. And we're prepared to do it, you know. So, and just to have that, and whether you do it as a, uh, do you want to have a Friday afternoon glass of wine while we do it? Or do you want to have dinner one night, but we'll have dinner, you know, together and you cook whatever and, you know, make it a bit of fun. Or it might be lunch because, you know, you've got commitments yourself in the night. So I think you could, you, it's up to you to actually spice up um, the friendship, if, if that makes sense, and, and reactivate those friendships. Because when Maggie said that it's more time with your friends, I thought, yeah, that is. And I came home and I made a list of these people and I said, um, because I had that one client where I was driving a couple of hours or four hours a week. And I would say, I'll call you on Monday afternoon when I'm driving. And it was, and I'd book those people in so that even if the phone conked out a few times, we still had that conversation. So that would be one, you know, looking at reactivating that that bridge. And then in terms of, of moving to a new area, which I'm originally from Sydney, but I moved to the Northern Rivers slash Gold Coast 20 years ago so and I moved house a few times and what I found was that I had to make the effort sure people would well in COVID they couldn't come over the border but I had to make the effort to meet new people so what I found was if I did the same thing at the same time so I would walk on uh, go for a walk in the morning and if you're a walker there's people other people walking so and I good morning good morning and if ha- anyone had um, uh, a, a cap that was my football team, I'd stop and ha- I'd have a conversation. Oh, what do you think? Do you think they're going to win this week? Oh, you know, I, or I'd make a comment because I, I felt, okay, it's up to me, Robin. You know, <laughs> you know, no one's going to knock at the door and say, I want a new friend. You know, is it you? I've got to make an effort. So I was in an um, apartment block and I would 
I, I, there was a pool and it was at the front and I would swim and then I'd just, oh, morning, morning, as I'd be, be talking to people. So to do something at the same time or to go to the cafe at the same time, because then you get to see the same people and you just stop and have a little bit more conversation. But you've got to sort of put your, you know, big girl boots on and go, I'm going to talk to a stranger and they won't bite you, you know. I've, I've actually never sort of thought of it as explicitly as that, but that's a really good point. I I can remember having conversations when I was sort of in my 20s and we, my girlfriends and I were sort of starting to marry off and, and find partners and, and those sorts of things. And with a couple of my girlfriends who were single, I can remember saying to them, just keep doing the things that you like doing. You like tennis, keep playing tennis. You will yeah. meet someone that makes ten, plays tennis. Yes. There you go. But I hadn't actually really thought of that being, well, it's probably, it's quite obvious now that I say that out loud, but of course the timing and being regular yeah, at the at same that, time. At that time. Because the people, and, and maybe it's not six o'clock in the morning, maybe you do it at like 11 o'clock in the day, or it might be that I'll, if I'm going to, there's, there's two favourite places I like. One is um, a little fish takeaway place that I'll, I go to regularly, often see the same people because it's around lunchtime. Or there's a Thai restaurant that I'll go to for lunch on Fridays and it's same people there. And, oh, hi, how are you going? Oh, you know. Uh, and you start with boring weather, but you move into, oh, you're working this week? Oh, and what are you doing? Oh, it, you know, so you, you build, so it's really, um, I used to, backward in a networking presentation, I used to say it's like building a bridge and you start that you're total strangers, then your acquaintances, then you build that bridge of trust and communication and it becomes a friend. And then as you've done really well, Joe, that sort of customer client advocate, and I use that language because customers go, Joe, can you help me with this? And they'll get you once. You did a good job. Okay, you're a client, they'll use you more than once. And then advocate, oh, you need Joe. So, but you've got to start from total stranger, you know, and your special interests. I love film. That's my world. You know, my ultimate job would be working in the film industry, not on set with all the actors, but behind the scenes systems. That would be, oh, God, God to heaven. Anyway, I volunteered at the Gold Coast Film Festival a couple of years ago, or maybe five years ago now. And uh, I couldn't get many starters that wanted to do it. They wanted to go and see the films, but no one wanted. So I was there like day after day for like a week or so. And I saw the same people coming back by themselves, two women here, one there, one there. And I collected all their email addresses. And I said, oh, I'm going to start a film group. And I did. And now five years later, we when COVID came, we turned it into a lunch group because the films, yeah, couldn't go to the films. Uh, and they're various ages from 35 to 85. But that, and there would be a core of 12 of them. And we had lunch, um, our local theatre closed, but it's really opening again in February, blah, blah, blah. And so we have a system where we score the film not to five. And if it's a naught, oh, I'm in trouble. But if it's a five, you know, we've seen some good fives. And we have a conversation about it. And then we either have a meal or a coffee or whatever after. So take what you like and find other people who like what you like, you know, That's and don't so worry cool. about gender or age or any of that, you know, just like-minded people. And, and it could be church. It could be that they or an art gallery. It could be, or sport, whatever it is, or children. Gravitate to those people and just keep in touch. And, and you know, if they don't phone, you know, that lady took four business cards. I've probably given out another 10 business cards to people and they've never rung. And I I, said, I don't know what I'm doing. And she said, oh, maybe you're a bit pushy, Robin. And I went, oh, well, you know, life goes on. No big deal, you know. I feel that people that are, like, in your orbit will contact and if not, then they've self-selected. Yeah, that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I just think that sometimes you meet these amazing people you have a really interesting conversation you've got something you find that you've got something really in common with them and then unless you give them something to be able to contact you they go into the ether and they might be on they might be in Hong Kong they could be in New York you're never going to see them you've just met them randomly at some event so I, I do believe in the um 
there's a, a Chinese um, uh, one safe system. It, it's the red thread thing that everyone that you're meant to meet in your life is collect is connected by a red thread when you're born, all these red threads, and eventually all those red threads connect. I do believe that. I agree. Or I feel like, yes, and then I feel like that we also then are maybe threading with like a gold thread through there are the ones. Yes, that you people well. get gold threads. I like that. Yeah. You can, you can take that. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll quote you tomorrow. My friend Joe says Thank you. gold Thank threads. <laughs> So I think what you have sort of segued in beautifully um, is that it's been quite interesting actually moving to Southeast Asia where, where business cards are still a really big thing. But I think for, for my networking career, I guess that you would call it that, um, that I've sort of developed over time as I lean very, very heavily on LinkedIn and yes. not only in a, a work capacity or a career capacity, but I'm finding that it is actually really fabulous for when you're meeting people socially to yes. be able to sort of almost trawl through um, to see what they've been up to. Like I've, yes. I've found that it's not really, you know, maybe I sort of think when I was, I was traveling in my twenties, you're like, let's connect on Facebook and then you can stalk yes. their photos and see the sort of things sure. that they get up to. But I've found just in the last, in the more recent years, using LinkedIn as that way to, to make sure that that connection continues after the first yes. meeting yes. has been really fabulous because I can then look and you look through their profile and it might be that you knew someone that was at university at the same time as them or that you, um, that mutual connection thing is actually really helpful. So and, that and it shows that. where they've grown up so you can at least, so, and, and just just a quick uh, quick example of using it as a research tool. I was working with a not for profit up in um, the Sunshine Coast, and they were trying to get funding out of this um, body in in uh, Brisbane, and they were set to go to the meeting. And they were sort of, I said, well, I'd leave an hour earlier than what you're planning because there could be traffic. Blah blah blah. You want to get there rested. I want, and we went on literally in the room and we said, okay, now this guy grew up in Geelong. Oh, okay. Then he lived in Perth. And okay, so that's interesting. Then, and so we went through the three, we put the three names of the people they were meeting and there were three of them going. And I said, now you're looking for funding. I said, so it's about research. And I find it's quite okay to say, oh, John, you know, I, I, I checked out your profile on LinkedIn yesterday. I noticed you grew up in, in uh, Adelaide, you know, and then how long have you lived in Brisbane? You know, that sort of, thing now to me it's not stalking it's actually paying them the courtesy and you know and that another long story short they ended up getting the funding because the other people who were going there arrived flustered they were coming from the same area flustered late da 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 they had done no no research at all and they went in cold and I said you know when you have not um gossip about the person but facts what you're showing to me is oh wow you bothered to do this you know, you invested time in checking out my background. Well, I'll pay the courtesy of, of doing doing the same. Yeah, mm. so I love LinkedIn. Um, just a thing, I've got, um, I'll hold that up. This QR code links to my LinkedIn page. So when I give a card out, and I, I made the mistake in Southeast Asia, not giving a card out with two hands, you know, which you're meant to do facing them I did everything wrong I just sort of oh and I used to bend the corners of the card so that um I'd know um I'd know they, that was the important person I had to follow them up well of course that's the biggest insult you can do over there so anyway I learned the hard way yeah not to do that but, that's very uh, yeah, good to know the QR code yeah don't don't bend the cards yeah because it's a name card so if you deface it you're really defacing them yeah well, as far as QR codes and LinkedIn, I, a game changer for me has been um, in LinkedIn, the app on your phone, being able to go into the search bar, you hit search, yep. and then a little QR code comes. Have you seen this? No, I, I don't do LinkedIn on my app, on the phone, yeah. You literally, you tap it, you open up your profile. Oh, yes. Now my screen's going to do weird things. Yep. You tap search. And then in the corner is a QR code. 
And what does it do? Well, it comes up with a QR code that people can scan or you tab across and I can then scan someone else's QR code and it opens their profile up. And you connect with them instantly. You connect with them straight away. Then That's a game great. changer. That's, that is very cool. It's yeah. very cool. Well, so there you go. Um, that's a hot tip for you all that have got LinkedIn on your phone when you are <laughs> not stalking slash meeting people on the side of your children's soccer game. That is also a way to connect in with people. And and that's a, that's a good point, point Joe. That you know, if you did meet that person on this, and and you've got their name, um, and they're Johnny's mother, so you know it's you know Johnny, you know whatever, that you look them up, you find them, and I. I used to be quite explicit when I'd say, and this is back in the day before LinkedIn, we'd send an email, but but now it's like, oh, um, and I'd put it in the invitation, the wording, um, the invitation to connect. Uh, hi, Mary, met you on uh, Sunday at the at the game. I was wearing a red jacket. Uh, we spoke about blah, blah. So that, you know, you really, it, now if they ignore you, well, you know, don't take it personally. But most often they're grateful that you've connected and then it's up to you, you know, what what you do. But I, I probably spend 15 minutes a day on, on LinkedIn and I can say, hands down, I get about 70% of my work from LinkedIn and I, I just love it. And and uh, you can get involved in groups. So that could be an interesting um, spin from this group, uh, this um, a community that you're establishing that you might have a LinkedIn group where multiple don't have it that you're the only one that that feeds in I've made that mistake and then when you're not feeding in it gets a bit messy but if everyone can sort of um contribute and they don't need to be approved and um they can all support each other and then it might be that someone sees an invitation to something and they go you know do you want to come you know and so it's it becomes social but the groups I follow a diverse group of um diverse I've got everything from like publishing to films and script writing and all sorts of different things, you know, um, trauma, um, dyslexia, all sorts of different groups, but interesting conversations. Very much so. I found that it's just really good in that um, if I go to something where I meet a lot of people and I can't remember names, that you yeah. can go back through your connections and find when you connected so you can find yes. the date at least and then you look for the picture of the face yes. that you recognise. Yes. 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 Yeah, it's it's great. Uh, to me, LinkedIn is more going to a networking event and Facebook is a bit more like going to the pub. So mm. I've never been a Facebook person. I'm on there, but like I go there once every six months or so. And it's, it's that I, I've consciously made that choice and it's also time management I don't want to get swallowed up in social media that that's all I do so you know 10-15 minutes a day that's it so talk me through what are you doing because that is obviously network building while you're on LinkedIn what are you yep. doing most so what I do um I look up um well I I used to download it's quite interesting what I post I used to download a lot of um images from Canva and then, uh, and I subscribed to it and I did it for maybe 12 months. And my system again was I'd go, okay, I'd have folders that were like January, February, March. And whatever I posted, I'd, I'd download from Canva. I'd put it in as I've posted that in January. And then I'd, whatever I posted in February, and that would be an image, you know, so it would have a saying on like a, not necessarily motivational, but some interesting saying. And then I realized after a couple of months of doing that, I could just recycle because people don't really remember what you post. And I might, I, so I did go through hundreds and hundreds of, <laughs> of images from Canva, but then they changed the system and you couldn't take photos anymore. So I did write to them and say, I'm going to pull out my subscription, right? $17.99 a month or something, but they didn't change it back. So, but I do have a lot of old Canva things. So I go in, I look, uh, for the feed in, in the morning. I do Wordle. So I do my Wordle. Then I go on to, so that's about 6.15 a.m. I go in, I just look at those posts. I share the ones that I like and I might share two or three. I go up to on the top where it says, um, what's the word? It's it's three across. 
um, and I click on that and it comes down anything that I've posted or anyone in my network that might be having a birthday, might have changed jobs, that sort of thing. All that feed comes down and I just look at those. If someone's made a comment I might on something that I've posted, I might go back and say, thanks for your comment or I agree with you. Or Sometimes if they're rude, and occasionally they are, probably once a month it's someone that says, I don't agree with you, you know, that's stupid. And I just go, oh, delete, yeah, or block. That's okay. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. And if you don't like it, well, we're never going to have a conversation. So you're gone, you know. Um, and then I go to groups and have a quick look at groups. Uh, and there might be a few favourites there. Usually the film or the script writing ones are, are of interest. And, uh, yeah, so it's sort of 10, 15 minutes. If I'm going to do, um, okay, uh, now, so the other day when I was in Darwin, there was a top 100 business people in the, in, in the NT and I knew some of them but definitely not the hundred so I've got that on my on my desk and I will go through and just go congratulations on making the top 100 da, da, da. you know I can I'm chair of a board up there would like to connect with you now if I do, if they're not there if I assume they're going to be there and if they're not there or they say no life goes on you know I don't take it personally if someone doesn't accept my my invitation yeah so I love that. I love that idea of um, the pulling lists of people from, from different, and that can be really interesting, um, particularly if you're not working, being able to really stay in touch with people in your industry or your niche or things is to yes. be staying on top of awards or conferences and things. That's been a strategy that I've used over the years with um, when I go to in a pre-COVID world when I would go to a, a physical conference, yes. is I would get the agenda and I would connect with every single speaker on there yep. and I would say, yep. look forward to looking forward to yes. hearing you yes. at this event, yes. even if I had no intention of going to their session or yep. it was nothing to do with, <laughs> with what. Um, but quite often it was interesting they would be, they say, I'll oh, look forward to meeting you there. And then quite often yes. they would have recognised your face or vice versa and yes. then you actually connect in person. Yes. I had a couple of awkward ones over the years where they've said, oh, great, how did you find the session? And I'd be like, sorry, oh. I, I actually got <laughs> caught up at another session. I didn't get to yes. get to yours, but um, they're yes. like, oh, well. And I, I the go-to with that is like, do you know if there was a recording? So they're always like, yes. oh, and that keeps yes. the conversation going as yes. well because they then go and track down the recording. Yes. And that's that's a really good one for prior. But I, I also like to do that after. And whether it's an online one or um, depending, sometimes I do um, different um, attend a webinar. It might be a community-based something and the names are there and you interact with people. And not everyone, it's not stalking, but just those ones that I have connected with, I, I, I make a note of their name and I, I go and I say, oh, we both attended the da-da-da tonight. Um, yeah, we've obviously got an interest in, and that's more a community focus, you know. Um, but after a conference, the people I have seen and liked at the conference, I will, you know, usually go to them and just say, I enjoyed your presentation at blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, your comment about da-da-da. So. And I think as it's well, like, you know. yeah, and I think for people that are not um, working and going to conferences and things where, you know, that it's the, the junket that works paying for to go to a junket. Sure. Um, but there's so many online free sessions and those sorts of yes. things that you can still sit or watch the recording later um, and then connect yes. in with those speakers. And people, I've, I've done a lot of speaking over the years and run workshops and spoken at conferences and things. And I, I love it when someone reaches out afterwards yeah. or beforehand and, and sort of says this is a, it was great or I really liked this or looking forward to you speaking at, at this event. Um, but a lot of those things have been online and have been free for participants to watch. Yeah. So so three three words that I would encourage your listeners to um, to write down and maybe think seriously about why so whether it's LinkedIn or it's going for the walk at the same time every day or you know um volunteering at a charity you, you know knowing that you know um you don't have to speak Mandarin it's going to be okay there's lots of sort of lackey jobs that you could do you know at, at charity events you know they're grateful someone's bothered to offer why are you doing it 
what do you hope to achieve and how you're going to do that and what we've really been talking about is our how how we do that um but as i said before i was looking at that one uh, when we were talking offline that one and and, and i thought oh, oh i might go to that now like, oh, no not really i wouldn't pay a thousand dollars to go to that but i i often think for some things that i do spend a lot of money going to and sometimes it is online um sometimes these days it's face to face i think the more you pay to go the higher the level of decision maker if you're actually looking to um to connect and these days the remote office as you well know um what's well, you know part of you know one of your businesses uh, with point of remote you know that that that's acceptable today you know that's whereas pre-covid it was oh my goodness you know they're in um Bulamakanka, no way you know whereas now everyone's got a connection and, and a phone and a laptop and that's it so you got a job so that's really interesting talk me through the three things again why what and how okay so go back go go back to what a like what would be some of the whys like why why okay, are people so, back to okay, basics so if, of networking if, why are you networking if it was linkedin why why you bother i i've grown now and i was anti linkedin anti social media when i started really anti but i if you drink the cool and, he was the, the um he was a real sort of um linkedin guru and we both spoke at a thing and he spoke about online networking and i spoke about face to face this is going back a few years now and he said i looked for you on linkedin i couldn't find you I went oh no i don't want linkedin oh no i was so ignorant of all of it and he said watch my presentation Robin he said I think you'll you'll realize that he gave us all the ins and outs of LinkedIn and then he said uh, and he had a book and he said so this coach from New York wherever uh said do you mind if I back in the day where you'd ask if you could share now you it, the way it's set up you just share it would you mind uh, if I shared that with my network I've got you know however many thousand in America and Iggy said you know he watched his his hits on his website go from, you know, not much, not much, not much to like 1,385, you know, down to not much, not much. And I said, how many books did that convert to? He said, you would be surprised, Robin. And I went, oh my God, okay, got to do this. So, <laughs> but the why is, do you, are you going to use that time? Are you going to use the time to build your connections, knowing that, uh, you aren't just the title on your business card, that you're actually, you've got uh, lots of knowledge, lots of skills, whether it's parenting skills, whether it's the whole relocation to another country, which would absolutely overwhelm me. Like, what do you take? What do you leave? What about your clothes? What about your books? Oh my God, I've got stuff to burn, you know? Like, I moved from one suburb and I've got a semi trailer. So, you know, <laughs> so I would need help in that area. So, what what do you know? What are you passionate about? And who who's interested in sharing that knowledge? You know, who might like to know where the best yoga classes are? And I, I was thinking, I was thinking today, you know, if I was trying to, if I was in um, the shoes of the one of the spouses listening today, any event that I went to, anyone that I met that lived in Singapore. I would say, what's where do the locals go? What's the best, not not the most expensive? What's the restaurant that has the best food? I'm a bit of a foodie. So what's the restaurant? And I'd make a note of that. And I would become the go-to person, like you are, Joe. You know, I'll ring Joe, she'll know. Where where should I take, you know, three of my friends that are over from, you know, wherever? Where should I go for a family yum cha? Where should I go for this? And uh, that's what I, where's the place that no uh, Australians know about that's really good? And I'd make a note of that. So you become that person that you might have been at home or wherever home originally was. You become that person that, oh, you know, what's the latest bar? What's the latest this? What's the latest that? Ring Susie, she'll know. You become that person for Singapore or wherever you're living. Hong Kong, where you know it doesn't matter where it is, because you become so you're you become a sphere of influence about and and I know some of the listeners might go, I oh, just Google it, Robin. That you know you're not that smart, but it's it's what's not on Google. 
you know, the little places that no one knows about, they're not on Google. They don't, they don't advertise, you know, they're not on page one. I've, I've found actually just you, like your process to become that thought leader in best places to eat in Singapore. Yeah. I've actually been using that um, very much in a social um, networking way. So say if I'm invited to, this happened with one of my daughters was at a, a birthday party and I was sitting with a whole lot of the parents and how I sort of launched into the conversation with them was, okay, you guys have all been here longer than me. Give me your favourite three restaurants. And I now yeah. save them. I You would love this. I used yeah. to just have like a note in my phone. I have now taken it to the next level. I put them straight into my Google Maps. I save yeah. the location. I write in the note who told me about it. Um, if there was any dish that they recommended. Gold star. I know, but do you know what I found out at this very party was that you can then actually share that list in Google Maps and it then pops up in their Google Maps with all the same places. That would be very cool. See, that that, that is like instant sphere of influence in, in in my world, you know, because like it's when you're traveling, not only the which hotel will I stay at or or B and B or apartment or what's best? I don't know. I've not been there before. What's best? Or I've got relos coming and I don't want them to stay with me. There's not enough room. Where can they stay? And where can I eat? Because or you know who's a doctor or who's a dentist or what do I need? So so the why would be I want to expand my network in a comfortable way and I want to do it with like minded people. So it might be. Uh, you know, I mentioned I'm a passionate about film. Well, I, I could talk Netflix and stand until the cows come home, but I love to go to a big screen film. So who else loves films that you could say, okay, on uh, Mondays at 11 o'clock, we go to, you know, this one and um, I'll, I'll email you. There's just a small group of us and then we have lunch after. We go to the 11 o'clock, I assume in Singapore, they have the same similar times screenings. Uh, and then we have lunch after. So you got time to go and pick up the kids after that. So you create your own um, social stuff because otherwise you, you you might fall into the trap of it's, you know the ladies who do lunch and it, it and nothing wrong with doing lunch but you know you get bored with that. This is what we're trying to create with the trailing spouse co, Robin. That there is time for that whenever you want to tap into it because those are the yes. easiest networks to find. But what's harder to find is those that with um, talking about things other than your kids and talking about things yes. other than... Mental stimulation. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and and just on conversation starters, you know, because that was one of the points that we sort of brainstormed. No, uh, yeah, I, I had interesting... Um, interesting experiences in Asia where people would say so what do you get paid for that presentation that you've just done to you know a thousand people and you know um, what car do you drive and how much does that cost and how much do you earn in a year and I thought oh my god we don't answer these questions in Australia but it was very direct and I thought oh this is how it is you know and I just make stuff up I mean, I thought, oh, I'm not used to this was my thought this is not my comfort zone so what I found though that that I can talk to anyone, uh, and when I do the online training and stuff and facilitation, talk to anyone because I say, tell me about, tell me about where you live, tell me about your job, tell me about your family, tell me about something you'd really love to do if money was no object. And anyone, you know, even the toughest, hardest, grumpiest face person, male or female, tell me about, get some going. And you're not putting anyone on the spot because it's tell me about. So it's a very um, non-pushy way of starting a conversation rather than, you know, how much did you earn last year and what fee did they pay for that person? I thought, where am I? You know? But it was, it, was, it was very direct. Yeah, I remember I laughed. I just laughed and, and said, oh, talk, speak to the organiser. I don't know. I'd say something like that. Yeah, I I um I recently caught up with the a state government minister in Australia who her go to when meeting she is obviously going to a lot of 
events, meeting people on a very regular basis. And yep. she was talking about her go-to line is tell me about your background. Mm-hmm. And that is a really interesting thing. And she said it's it's been quite interesting um, because people can take what they want from that. Sure. But then in the same conversation, there was another, um, she was very senior in a corporate role and she said, I find that a challenging one because she said I it was it used to be my go-to was tell me about your background but she yes. said it relatively recently to an Australian who had um, Asian heritage and her what she took from that was where her family's like where her like the yes. look of her had come from so her cultural background oh. and then it was a bit confronting for the for the woman who had asked because she sort of meant more career-wise or yes. job or how would she and and the, the reaction was like oh she thinks I look different and so I'm going to talk about what my yes. physical yes. background is so it's an interesting it's an interesting one to use yeah yeah because I, I just think it's not about putting your life on it on, on hold you've made this huge I won't say it's a sacrifice it was obviously a, a joint decision to go to move and and support and you want to be the same person that was this engaged interesting person before you left you know you like you haven't left your personality you've still you're still you so value that you've got so much to contribute and i i would if i was in in that position i would really want to become okay i just want to know what's happening and i'll become that that go to person for people who are who are new to Singapore or, or new to Hong Kong, wherever, um, and uh, the person that the because you 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 create that sphere of influence, and the spheres of influence are people who know uh, a little bit about a lot of things and a lot about one or two areas, and you're you become very good at connecting, and which is Joe is master at connecting like-minded people. So you've got this person's interested in you know aircraft that were made before 1958 oh you need to speak to you know David he is too you know he's interested in that too really obscure things but it's you have systems you write it down you know and and you also eventually your brain kicks in and and you you do create quite a good memory you know if you if you focus on that you know and you know there's book clubs and all sorts of stuff that you can um I read I heard about a book club the other day that um they just they so they call it a book club, but they just get together once a week for dinner and no one ever reads a book. But they say <laughs> they call it book club because it sort of sounds good. And uh, they all read, but not the same book. So they come and they'll say, you know, I've read this one and, you know, whatever. Well, Which I'm is- actually part of an article club in Singapore. Ooh. So we, um, I haven't heard of this concept before and it is fabulous. So um, each month someone puts forward an article or a TED talk or a YouTube clip or something. So it's a it's a bite size or it might be a yeah. long read. So the max you're sort of spending on it is 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. And gee whiz, there have been some very interesting topics that have just been really great at generating um, conversation. And we have a really diverse crowd. They're all women, but really from all different sort of backgrounds and um, it's been a really interesting, a really interesting way of doing that sort of um, turn up to something where you don't know the others. The one woman that's facilitated has obviously known everyone and brought everyone together, yes. but there was yes. very few crossovers at our first um, at our first meeting, which was really interesting. But I just wanted to take it back a step. That concept of um, I didn't get asking. That. Could you try again? Siri interrupting me here. That concept of um, that concept of of being somewhere and that hit of confidence that you've taken sure. being removed from what we I don't know. And I think it, it's quite often a, a a very Western thing as well as I think that so much of our identity is tied to career and what you do for work Definitely. and how Definitely. intimidating it can be going to somewhere where the event where people will ask you what you do. And so yes. what that de- default is like quite often I hear the word just 
oh, I'm just a stay-at-home mum at the moment. I'm just yeah. here because my husband's job. I'm I'm just. Yeah. Have you got some yeah. tips on how yeah. do you yeah. sort of? Yeah, it's. <laughs> I think you've got to try different things and. Again, you know, that why, what, how, which um, whenever I'm going anywhere, so uh, on the weekend I'm, I fly to Sydney and I'm going to a friend's birthday party and and she's got this thing that she'll have the name tag and how long she's known people, which, oh, blessings, blessings, because I forget names quite, quite, quite easily. But I think it's... It's not so, you're, well, you're not, you're not your business card. You know, you're not your business card, nor is your partner their business card. And I, I actually think that men struggle with this more than, than women in terms of, you know, they are their job sort of thing. So, but I think if I, uh, uh, interesting that story you told about the woman who said, tell me about, uh, what, did you, what did you say? Tell me about. Tell me about your background. Yeah, tell me about your background. Yes. And so. It might be something like, oh, um, uh, so tell me about your work or um, where do you work? Oh, I've just come out of 10 years in finance or, you know, 20 years in whatever. Or um, I've had a, um, a mix of industries. So you can capsulate what you're trying to do. What I'd be wanting to do would be to, to give myself credibility without, and it might be, oh, well, I'm between roles at the moment, but my last one was a really interesting assignment that I did for da da, or I, I'm uh, um, I'm taking a break at the moment, but I normally consult to blah blah, so that you don't have to like. I'm not saying that putting yourself into oh I'm the I'm the travelling spouse is is a put down, but you 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 are whatever you are proud of is what you want to say and and it's like someone that starts a business and they say oh I've only just started you know I've been doing it five minutes or it feels like five minutes they're only doing it because they were doing it for 20 years and they realized wow I can do this way better or five years and I can do it way better than the people I used to work for so now I'm doing it for myself so I think it's try a few different things and practice it on other people before you actually get to the event so that, you know, and I know it sounds pathetic saying practice it in front of the mirror, but, you know, it's it sometimes helps. And and I also, I listen to what others say and then go, oh, I like that, and I make a note of that, you know. So, oh, I'll try that next time, you know. Well, I was about to say you could reverse engineer. I've got a background in, like, yes. if people, if people are asking you what your background yes. is. And they don't really care. They're just making conversation. It's a bit like in, in Australia, it's like, where are you from? You know, in, in, in Victoria, it's where to go to school. You know, on the Gold Coast, it's like, you know, where are you from? Because no one's born in Queensland. They all move there, you know, from somewhere else. So, yeah, it's, and, and each each location has, uh, it's, um, uh, well, it's culture and it's whole, it's whole vibe. But I would think specifically Singapore and Hong Kong from my, uh, my, Time. It's been a while since I presented in, in in either place, but they're very international cities. So people come and go all the time, and they're there for many reasons other than the holiday. So I I I just I think you're incredibly brave to move to another country, regardless of whether you've moved there for work or or, or to support your your spouse. So I would look at it that I take every advantage to um, do the things that you love to do but keep yourself interested and interesting because when you're interested in something and and you open your diary and you go oh okay what have I got on this week oh I, now I went to Zumba this morning at 8 15 this is only my second time in Zumba in two weeks or three weeks two out of three I've, I've been there and uh, my friend's going away and I said oh okay uh, should I'll be away from him I went oh yeah well I'll see you when you get back I'll, I'll come I've signed up for the five week whatever deal you get, you know. So Zumba, corny as it is, but you sweat a lot, and that's what that's why I'm going. 
And there's people there that, oh, and this one here's introduced you to, they don't look and go, what's your job? They just go, oh, okay. She, she's, she's here too. She must live in the area, which is the case, you know? So look at what's on and what you're interested in and whether you've ever done it, you know, but have, have your week planned. So it's always flexible, but you know that you sort of lock in and you've got things that you do on a regular basis. That is like gold. I, I, the, I think stay interested to stay interesting can absolutely be the absolute key takeaway. Like I think that oh. is such a, no, but I think that that is such a, a really interesting thing because yeah. it's that concept yeah. of if you're interested, it means your brain is staying engaged. You are you're thinking curious. about it. You are yeah. reading. You are engaging because you're interested. And then when you meet people, yeah, who cares what you might be interested in film and you don't generate revenue from that. But, like, yeah. oh, I've got a background in being absolutely obsessed with watching cult films from the 60s yeah. in France. Well, that's <laughs> that's not my area, but I'd be interested in talking to you about that. Yeah. So th that's that's the thing. I think that, that um, one of the... Um, for anyone, anyone that's listening that might experience um, anxiety or depression or has ever, one of the things of, you know, activating the um, uh, your vagus nerve, which goes from here down to your gut, is, you know, like when you go to the hairdresser and you and they massage here, that's why you love it, because it's your, it's your vagus nerve that they're activating. But it's around curiosity, being curious about things. And that can be being grateful. I'm grateful I've got this opportunity. Wow, I'm living in another country. How amazing. And being curious. I wonder how they do this. And I know it's convenient to always get taxis, but even just to walk, you know, as long as it's safe in, the, in those places. But, you know, walking gives you a whole different insight than if you're, you know, driving or in a taxi. Yeah, so on a bike or something. Yeah, but I, I, um, I think it's exciting. I would just take it that it's this wonderful opportunity and what an experience for those with children I think traveling is one of the best things best educations for children and what a what a wonderful experience for them to be living in another country and experiencing different cultures so when they do come back to Australia or wherever home is for you they really appreciate where that that home I think that's that's important what a beautiful way to wrap it up Robin Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. I'll include all of your website and contact details. That'd be great. Um, yeah. and happy to have a Zoom with any of the, uh, if you've got specific challenges, you know, or look me up on LinkedIn and mention uh, um, Joe's um, podcast and stuff and, and uh, more than happy to connect and have a conversation and tee up a Zoom with you. I'm, I'm very Zoom friendly. <laughs> Love it. Thanks so much, okay. Robin. Thanks, Joe.